Hey guys, back here for Pat here. It's an absolutely glorious day here in Central Florida, Palm Bay, Zone 9B. I've been, I, it was been exactly eight months since I planted my first vegetable, my first plant here in Central, in this home in Central Florida. And it's just incredible the amount of growth that I've had over the past eight or eight months. And I wanna show you everything that is growing in the garden so that I can, I can encourage you to get started today to get planted. So let's get started. So the very first thing I want to start off is with this lemongrass guys do you remember that lemongrass i planted back in march which is like five months ago look how huge it has become now this started with just a few little twigs of lemongrass like they barely even had a leaf on it that i planted um in the ground and now it's a massive mound of lemongrass there's no way i can use all this lemongrass it's enough to eat it's enough lemongrass is just such a a great plant not only is it excellent in the asian dishes it's great for muscular pre prevention it has a lot of you know medicinal value it's a delicious plant my dogs actually love it if they're not feeling well they come and nibble on some leaves and they feel better right beside it i have my sugar cane and this also i planted on the same video as my lemongrass video this started off with just a couple little twigs of sugarcane in the ground and now guys look the sugarcane is all the way up to my rooftop it's incredible all i need now is some red sugarcane this is just a regular green sugarcane that i planted and you can see they're doing extremely well you can even see right over there there's some additional shoots coming up so i'm having an abundance of sugarcane just from these few pieces but i want more there's never enough sugar cane, so I plan on getting some more sugar cane. Um, if I knew it would have done so well, I'd have gotten more to begin with, but I'm gonna get, I'm looking for some red sugar cane that I'm gonna add to my garden, but that's like five months old. So guys, do you know what this is? This little tiny plant here is my June plum. And look, this, I've never seen a June plum this small that has so many fruits on it. There's probably close to a dozen fruit and a baby lizard. <laughs> anyway, there's probably like a dozen fruit on here, but this tree is so healthy. This actually made it through the hard freeze that we had where we lost a lot of plants. This was in a tiny pot and it survived. Most of the leaves fell off, but it came right back. And look guys, look, it is actually blossoming right now. So I'm gonna have even more June plums on this tiny little tree. I believe this is a dwarf June plum, so the, the plums won't get to the full size that you see in the islands, but nevertheless, it will taste just like June plums and it will be absolutely delicious. So right beside my June plum, guys, look at these beauties. Look at these beauties. These six foot, seven foot tall beauties, guys, do you know what this is? Can you believe that this is a cassava that I planted from stick? from sticks do you remember in my survival video i did back in march so that's five months ago go today is august 22nd so exactly five months ago i did a, a survival video and i spoke about my top survival foods the foods that you plant once and eat forever or you plant once and eat within a year cassava was one of them and guys i planted some little pieces of cassava sticks back then and look what these sticks have become so all of this beautiful foliage, not only makes the place look beautiful, but this means that there's some delicious cassava growing underground. And look, this is way over my head, way over the six foot fence. So I know we have quite a bit, bit of cassava growing underground. So I have several cassava plants. Right in front of my cassava, well, let's not forget, I have a jackfruit tree. So it's still small, but it look, it's looking healthy. So I know in no time, this is gonna grow way beyond the cassava, way beyond the fence and be up in the sky. Jackfruits can grow up to 60, 70, 80 feet tall. 
Um, I'm not sure how they'll do it here in Palm Bay, but I do believe that there are other people in Palm Bay that grow jackfruit, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so here, guys, hello, hello. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? So on that same survival video, I planted a few little pieces of sweet potato. I started several different sweet potatoes. Some were the purple flesh sweet potatoes, and you can tell by that purple leaf, that's one of them. I had the Jamaican sweet potato, which, which has a white flesh and a purple skin, uh, or a brown skin. I had some Japanese sweet potatoes. I had the traditional American yams, or sweet potatoes that have the orange flesh and the brown skin. And guys, I just planted them randomly, and look, my entire side yard is now taking over sweet potatoes, which I don't mind because not only are those delicious sweet potato tubers growing underground, but these vines can be enjoyed in my morning shakes. Every morning I can come out here, pick some vines. I can pick some vines if I don't have any spinach or don't have any greens to cook for dinner. I can pick some vines and cook them up. These greens are even more nutritious than spinach. It's incredible, guys. So. Grow you some sweet potatoes. To me, these are a must have, and these were also a part of my, um, my survival video. So right in front of the sweet, the sweet potatoes, we have chaya tree spinach, which I think is an absolutely beautiful plant. <laughs> the leaves look almost like, they almost resemble, they actually resemble the, the, um, the cassava leaves. But they're, they're different, they're different. Some people think they look like papaya leaves, but this is a chaya tree spinach. This spinach cannot be just eaten straight. You have to actually cook it. I believe it has the same thing that the cassava leaves have um, that can actually be toxic to you if it's not cooked properly. So these leaves have to be properly cooked before consuming. But what I love about it, not only are, I think it's an absolutely beautiful plant. Look at it, it looks so tropical, looks so pretty. But they also bloom these really pretty white flowers. Look, they have these white flowers blooming all over the top. So you can enjoy the beautiful flowers while you, while you um, wait for your spinach to grow. So this can already be consumed. As you can see, it has a lot of tree spinach on it. But I haven't actually tried this one yet because you have to go through a cooking process to, to um, cook away whatever. I can't remember what that um, thing is that it gives off that can actually be toxic if not thoroughly cooked. So um, right here we have my um, East Indian mango tree. East Indian mangoes may be one of my absolute favorite mangoes. And hey guys, look, there's a little vista there, a little green lizard. Yeah, East Indian mangoes is one of my favorite mangoes. This tree just has not been thriving at all. You can see it's looking pretty beat up. It looks like some insects really, um, it really took a hit with some insects. There was some green, um, some new, new leaves. These leaves on top are actually new growth, but it's not looking great, but I'm hoping that it will come back. I was expecting a whole lot more growth than this. Um, but you know, I'm not giving up on my East Indian mangoes as this and now Kerry are my two favorite mangoes. But guys, hello, 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 hello. The star of this row is this beautiful papaya. Look at this. It's probably seven feet tall. And do you guys remember that this was a little papaya suck sucker just maybe four months ago? And look guys, it has several baby papayas on there, several blossoms all the way up the stem. So I'm gonna get a ton of papayas from this one. This actually became, I think this is probably the one that's blossoming and bearing the most right now. Um, this is a sucker that I planted four months ago. It was a much smaller sucker that I got from my brother's papaya. But let me tell you guys, all the papayas on this tree originated from my papayas are my brother's papayas, which all, all really originate from my brother's papayas. And they are the absolute sweetest papayas on earth. You guys have got to go back and watch my papaya video. These papayas are like off the chain. So I'm really looking forward to this and I am gonna get papayas year one 
I'm gonna get papayas. This is only eight months in. So right to the side, you can see there's more cassava. If you notice, this cassava is a lot smaller than the first cassava we saw. And that's because this cassava is from my friend Jackie. You remember that um, cassava harvest I did a couple months back, two, maybe two or three months back? Well, I took a couple of the cuttings and I planted them in my garden. And look guys, just from the few sticks that I planted, we have beautiful cassava and I'm gonna show you more as we go along. As a matter of fact, here's another one that I planted two months ago, just from a stick in the ground. You can see all of this is new growth. You can see the purple, all of that is new growth. And the stick, the original stick is just, oh, you can't even see it. It was just a little piece in the ground. You can see where that, that wood is right here. That's where the original piece was. It was just a small piece in the ground. And from that came all of this within the past couple of months. So I have a ton of cassava growing in this garden, but cassava has become one of my favorite um, ground provisions. I've been cooking that up in the morning. I boil it. Sometimes I boil it and then I pan sear it with some garlic. Oh my gosh, cassava is so good. And then guys, hello, hello, hello. This banana has a story behind it. Do you see that little pink flag? on the ground right beside it. That's because this banana was so small or non-existent that I had to put a pink, that little pink stake just so I could know where the banana should be. So this banana started off maybe four months ago with just like a root, a piece of a root of a banana that my friend Lorraine gave me. It wasn't, it didn't have any leaves on it. It was just a piece of a root that she gave me. We didn't think it would make it but this has become the biggest banana in the garden. So this is like four or five months later. It's probably seven feet tall or eight feet tall because that's a six foot fence and it's significantly above the fence. So it's probably eight feet tall. And we're not quite sure what kind of banana it is, but she told me it's a very special banana and it's already proved itself very special because it has come back from, literally come back from the dead. Um, I, I, I've never seen bananas that grow all the way to the, to the ground like this. Usually the leaves are higher up. So if you guys are familiar with this banana, please let me know. So on this side, let's look at what we have here. So we have a frangipani, which is a flowering plant. That's right there. And then over here, we have um, some, we have a, a Thai, a white Thai guava and I cannot wait to see what this tastes like. I think I've had one from the store and it was pretty delicious. And I know that what I grow in my garden is gonna be 10 times better than the store. So I'm really looking forward to this. This started off as a pretty small plant. It's doing pretty well, has a lot of new growth on there. So I'm expecting big things for my white, my, my white um, Thai guava. Right beside it is another papaya um, seedling that I planted that is also doing very well. Now, of course, not as big as the other ones, but this is doing quite well. And I believe I sexed each of these papayas. I, I trimmed the, the main roots to make sure that they are female. So I believe this one is gonna be a female. It hasn't actually started blossoming yet, but I believe it will be a female. So right here we have our, um, this is actually a, um, a uh, yellow coat plum tree and I'm so excited guys I planted this yellow coat plum stick um, probably four months ago a friend of mine gave brought it to me thank you so much Marcia for bringing and Vincent for bringing me some plum sticks this is a yellow coat plum stick that I got four months ago there were no leaves I planted it it obviously has taken very well so I'm gonna have delicious delicious yellow coat plums. And I have to say, my friend Vincent and Charmaine, their yellow coat and red coat plum are the best I've ever had in my life. And they actually, what they did was they actually took one, they actually took the yellow and the red coat plum and they combined it into one tree. So half of their tree is red coat, half of the, their tree is yellow coat. So they have both plums on one tree. So that was pretty awesome. They grafted them together. I'm, I have mine separate right now. So that's my yellow coat. And they also brought me red coat. So I have 
this red cold plum tree and because they gave me their plum sticks from a bearing tree, a tree that was already bearing fruit, I am praying that I'll have fruit next year. Then of course, right beside it, I have my red cold plum tree, which I have to admit, they taste great, but they're nowhere near um, Marcia and Vincent's plums. Their, their plums taste way better. But I'm thankful for my record plum tree. I probably got 30 plums off it. It was the first time bearing, so I'm pretty happy that I got 30 plums. Then over here, I have a couple of avocados, long neck avocado and a small avocado I call Aunt Girlie because she's the one who gave me. That's my, my husband's aunt. She gave me um, a, a, a plum tree I mean, avocado tree that you grew from seed. So I call it Aunt Gurley's plum, uh, Aunt Gurley's avocado. Then here guys, hello, hello, hello. Guys, hello. This is also from the survival video I did. Trees to plant once and grow forever. And I do not like those nasty leaf footed nymphs that I'm seeing. Anyway, not to digress. So guys, this is my Moringa tree that I grew from seed. You guys remember back in March, I started some seeds for Moringa and I transplanted some seedlings. I actually only transplanted two of the seedlings. Two, I had two to give away. They never came for them. So these two are in the ground. This one is already up to the fence. It's six feet tall. This one is probably hmm, two and a half feet tall. So, you know, just like human beings, we grow at different rates. So even though these were planted at the same time, this one is two and a half feet. And this one planted at the same time from seed is six feet. But it's very healthy. You can tell it's small, but it's very healthy. And look at that, guys. Lots of new growth. So this one will be huge before you know it. All right. So here, um, guys, this is a very special plant. So this one is called a katuk, katuk, which is a delicious plant that can be it's eaten almost like a spinach. Um, people say it has, it tastes like peanuts. It tastes like a nutty flavor. Mm. I don't see it, but my husband and a lot of other people, they think it tastes like nuts. It does have a nice flavor. It's great in salads. It can be stir fried. The katuk has these beautiful little flowers. They're like pink flowers that are under the underside of the leaves. You can see where the buds are coming up here. They're not actually blooming right now, but they're really pretty. So under all these leaves have the little pink flowers when they bloom. So right in front of it, we have my absolutely spectacular pigeon peas or gandules, or in Jamaica, we call it gungu peas. And the reason I put so many right here along the front, along the, um, the fence, is because these have the most spectacular blooms. These have a beautiful yellow bloom. So this is gonna create like a beautiful wall of flowers. So I absolutely love gunga peas or pigeon peas. Jamaicans, we eat our rice and peas with everything. And this is gonna allow me to have my fresh gunga peas right here from my backyard. And as you can see, it looks like they're about to, to bud. Um, in Jamaica, we plant our pigeon pea seeds, seeds like probably around in March, April. So that way we harvest our gunga peas right before Christmas. So we can have our fresh gunga peas for Christmas. So it looks like we're going to definitely have some gunga peas this Christmas. Right in front here, I have um, a fig tree. This is my first time growing figs. Um, it, it was it was very diseased at first, but it looks like it's coming back. So it's a fig tree, and right beside it, I have Barbados cherry, which is the cherries that we grew up with in Jamaica. And I can tell you, Barbados cherries are incredible, incredible. These cherries, they're tiny little, tiny little cherries, but they have 70 times more vitamin C, pound for pound, than an orange. So if you have a cup of, of cherries or if you come and eat a handful of cherries every day, you are good on your vitamin C. Pretty awesome. Plus, it's pretty amazing in drinks, cocktails, whatever you want to have. Pretty amazing um, plants. So what else do we have here? Oh, guys, look. Right here, we have a tiny little cassava. So this shows you exactly what it started like. So all those big cassavas that I showed you started off like a little stick in the ground. And you can see 
This cassava just has two little leaves because this is the most recent one that I suck in the ground. And before you know it, guys, these are going to be as big as those cassavas that I have right there. You see those two big cassavas over the six foot fence in no time? That little tiny cassava is going to be that big. And right beside it, we have a pretty exciting plant here. This is the soursop or guanaba. I think it's called graviola, depending on what country you're in. And it's, it's in the Anona family, which is the same family as cherry moya or sweet sop, sugar apple. It's in that same family. But this plant is super important across the world. Soursop is highly um, valued as an anti-cancer treatment that it's most known across the world as an anti-cancer treatment and there's tons of research that shows that soursop both the fruit and the leaves i think even the bark is usable is used to not just fight cancer but it actually causes they said death of the tumor where it can actually kill the, the cancer tumors um as as as, as before you try anything, always ask your doctor, but go out and do your research. It's tons and tons of articles, pretty reputable cancer organizations are using this. I know soursop because I grew up having probably like 10 soursop trees in my garden and I absolutely love the fruit. It's a very creamy, it's sweet, but creamy and a slight little tartness in flavor. It's excellent. I just eat it fresh off the tree or you can make it into drinks or desserts. Soursop is a, is a really very um, versatile plant, uh, versatile fruit, and it's really delicious. So over here, I have a seminal pumpkin that has been trying its best to grow for literally months. Every time it starts growing, something eats it down. But right now, the leaves are looking very healthy. We had some rain this week, so it's popped up really nicely. And then right beside it, we have a whole lot of callaloo coming up. You guys remember a couple weeks, a couple months ago, I harvested my callaloo seeds and um, I put away most of the seeds, but then the trash part that I couldn't harvest the seeds from, I just sprinkled it, sprinkled it along here. And guys, look now. Now I have all this callaloo coming up. And this means this very weekend, I'm gonna have callaloo for, for lunch or for breakfast actually. Then right beside it, I have my, um, what is this? This is my Oti'iti apple, which is my favorite fruit in the world. My Oti'iti apple. Um, this had died down completely with the freeze. And as you can see, it has leaves now. Not a lot of growth, it's about the same size, but at least it has re-sprouted. So I'm hoping that this will hang on, hang it there. Here we have a Jamaican cherry tree and some other trees, but before we go over there, let's go check and see what we have in our little island. Let's see what else we have in the island. So right here, guys, hello. Do you know what this beauty is? This is my sweet sop or my sugar apple. Yes, guys, I have sweet sop and sugar apple coming up really nicely. These, this tree was a tree that I had at my previous um, home in a pot. And it was really scraggly, really sickly looking. But now that it's in the ground, it has sprouted all new leaves. I completely stripped this tree of all the leaves because sugar apple grows on new growth. So I literally took every leaf off the tree. As you can see, this is all new leaves. It's all beautiful. And I have sugar apples coming in. And right beside it, this is another sugar apple, which I really didn't think this was gonna make it. This was a little plant that I got from my agent. Um, there were literally after the freeze, there were no leaves. It was literally a single twig in the, in the ground. I mean, in a pot, but I decided, hey, it can't hurt to place it in the ground beside this, his big sister. And sure enough, it came up beautifully. So I'm gonna have two delicious um, sugar apple sources. So I'm super happy about this. So right over here, we have a tree called, this is a bush or herb called the curry leaf plant. And this is known throughout, this is used throughout India to make curry. So, you know, we, we people from the islands, we call curry that, that um, bright yellow um, 
spice that we have in our, in our pantry. But in India, they actually make their own curry using, you know, coriander and cumin, these curry leaves and different herbs to make and blend their own curry. So this is the main ingredient in India and the real Indian curry. It has a very strong flavor. I haven't actually cooked, I think I cooked it once, but I haven't really done much cooking with it. But it's also a great medicinal and of course a great herb and I do plan on cooking it with it more. And right here on this side, we have an ackee tree. Um, this is still pretty small, but you can see it's very healthy. Then in the center here, I have a whole bunch of um, heliconia, but the lobster, lobster claw, lobster claw plant. This is an absolutely beautiful plant. This is going to have a huge, beautiful flower that looks almost, it look, really looks like a lobster claw. And can okay, you guys, can you believe all of these plants that you see here started off from one pot? My sister had a lobster plant that she wasn't really doing anything with and it had dried up but the root was still good and I took the root and I broke it up into several pieces and I got multiple plants out of it not only over here but along the side of this of my island I put several more lobster plants so this is going to be spectacular once it starts growing in so to continue along my island I have another um, um, another guava tree here. It is so beautiful, so healthy. It has tons of new growths, tons of buds coming out. So I'm looking forward to that. You see, I have an aloe plant here. I have a few aloes in my island. Some red Hawaiian red tie. That's that plant right there. That's a Hawaiian red tie, right beside my beautiful cranberry hibiscus. Guys, look at that. My cranberry hibiscus is six feet tall. Look at that foliage. And it's not just here for its good looks. It is a delicious plant. You can put it in your salads. You can eat it fresh in the garden. It has like a citrusy, it has like a cranberry flavor. I guess that's why they call it cranberry hibiscus, not just because of the color of the leaves, but it does have a cranberry flavor. Then here I have some comfrey. And then guys, look at my banana suckers. This is just so exciting. My, this little banana, it was basically dead after the the heart freeze there was of course obviously it wasn't fully dead um there was some life but all the leaves fell off but then guys look i have one sucker here one sucker here one sucker behind there and look three more suckers come up here so this one small banana tree which is probably four and a half five feet tall maybe five feet tall has six suckers then over here my this additional banana tree also has um, a couple good sized suckers on under it behind this i have my fur vein or blue porter weed and i recently did a video talking about all the health benefits of it and then on this side we have a dwarf naysbury tree and this i planted from seed a seed that i got from my brother um, his dwarf naysbury tree and if you guys have seen that any of the videos from his garden you know that I'm all I'm always we're always talking about his dwarf naysberries that bear year round and the tree only gets to like maybe four feet I don't even think it's even five feet so looking forward to getting food from this then over here we have another cherry tree another banana tree some more cassava and then here is the adult or I'm uh, not adult the normal size naysberry and I've had several blossoms for over the past few months no naysberries have actually um, it hasn't actually held fruit yet but it is still a small tree it's probably four feet tall but I am it has a beautiful shape and I'm looking forward to that growing and give me lots of naysberries so there is another cassava that I recently planted from um, stick Here's my little pineapple walk. Whenever I eat a pineapple, I plant it in the ground. Right beside it, right in front, right beside the naysberry is my, my, um, what are these? Mulberries. These are my mulberries and it's laden, it's full of blossoms as you can see right now. And thanks to Diane, 
one of my subscribers, Diane, remember that tour I did when I just moved? She explained to me that with mulberries, you have to cut them back to get them to blossom again. And I cut this back. This, it was probably, all the branches were probably like seven, eight feet tall. I cut it all the way back. And I have multiple blossoms now on my mulberry. So that was a great tip from Diane that you cut back your mulberries to, um, to get more blossoms. So that's great. Then back here, I have several um, cocoa or malanga, edo. Um, that video I did where I planted malanga skins. You can see several have come up. Here's one malanga. Here's another one that is just coming up. Here is another one. So I have, this is basically all malangas here. Or cocoa. In Jamaica we call it cocoa. Some countries call it edo. I had different kinds of malanga. I had purple, I had white, I had edo, which are the smaller ones. This one is a giant malanga that I planted from a slice. And you can see how beautiful this is. So I'm going to have a beautiful walk of malanga here. Then we cannot pass my beautiful carry mangoes guys i did that carry mango review recently and since we, we harvested it has flushed out several new leaves it is now probably six feet tall so it has grown since the last time but the good thing about carry mango is that it won't get much taller than this and hopefully next year i'll get double the double or triple the amount that i got this year i only got six this year here I have um, several more cocoa or malanga that I planted along with some cuttings that I um, got from um, another property. And here I have a mandibilla. So here, right here I have another um, papaya. This is my biggest papaya that I have in the garden. It's probably seven feet tall now. Has multiple blossoms. And you can see it has one big papaya very disappointed um, a few weeks ago I had a papaya probably twice the size and it didn't hold it fell fell so I'm really hoping that this will hold and I'll get some papayas this year over here I have more cocoa more cassava and then here I have a giant passion fruit vine um, this one is very disappointing multiple blossoms throughout the year I mean throughout the past few months but i haven't got any passion fruit i went back to the person that i bought it from and he said that maybe i bought a papaya that doesn't bear fruit it only bears blossoms because um, passion fruit has a absolute beautiful blossom so some people do buy it for just the blossoms uh, let me see if i see a blossom open now i don't see any open right now but i bought it for the fruit so that was disappointing Right below it, you see several papaya seedlings that I have. I just actually just bought them out today. I had them in a little greenhouse I bought. And I just bought them out today because we had a rainstorm earlier. So I wanted to make sure that they got some natural rainwater. So you can see those are coming along very nicely. And then right beside on, on the same vine, I just stuck some um, some of these yard yard long beans. I just planted some more yard long beans. I planted some along my trellis, and they were so delicious that I planted a couple along here. And you can see they're already bearing lots of beans. These ha are now hands down my absolute favorite bean. I can see it's bearing very profusely, and um, really delicious. Here I have yet another papaya. This is another sucker that I planted same time a few months ago. And this, as you can see, also has multiple blossoms on it. Multiple blossoms and it also has a papaya. This one is about six feet tall. So this proves to you that papayas grow very quickly. Uh, I don't wanna miss out on my beautiful passion fruit vine, guys. Look how big this is. This is the passion fruit vine that actually bears fruit. So this is from my previous property and I've been getting lots of delicious passion fruit. Definitely, this is not the best setup. Ah, oh, I'm like squeezing in here. You can see the passion fruit squeeze up in here. They're bearing very well. They're not ripening very fast. I think it's because they're all 
um, covered so thickly by leaves. You can see none of none of them are bearing on the outside. They're all bearing on the inside. But I actually picked one a couple days ago and it's really delicious. Here has some more blue porter weed. Not much going on. Not much new going on in my in the veggie bed. Of course, my herbs are just absolutely amazing. My oregano. You can see my Cuban oregano over there. I have some okras, some sage, and this um, rosemary is just off the chain. Um, here I have some more of my long beans, more okra, and guys, look. These are my, my eggplants. They haven't held any eggplants. They're big and be beautiful, but they haven't um, held anything. But I'm hoping they will hold. But guys, the star of the show is look at my yams. Those are Jamaican yams. Those are white yams, yellow yams. You know the difference between the yellow and the white based on the, the stem. You can see that stem looks very black and it has those spikes. That's my yellow yam. And then the yam, the, the, where the stem is very smooth and green, that is the white yam. So I have both of them growing together. And they actually caught on to that rod that goes up to the roof. They caught on by itself and it went all the way up to the rooftop. So this is pretty awesome. Then over here, I have tons of sweet potatoes. This is where I come and get my sweet potato greens every morning when I make my delicious um, breakfast shake. Then right here, I have a couple of new beds that I just created. And here, this is the second one I've had. This is actual, actually a castor bean, um, castor oil. You know, you guys know castor oil. This is actually a castor bean plant. Um, I actually bought some butterfly um, beans. That's what I paid for and they sent me I didn't know what it was, what it was supposed to look like. I planted them and I have castor bean that came up. Um, but beside it, I have my scotch bonnet that took a licking but kept on ticking. It still has multiple scotch bonnets on there. Here's my basil that I never harvested. It's, I was supposed to harvest it like 10 times, never harvested it. But my basil still tastes delicious. And guys, look, this is my longevity spinach. It is huge. It has taken over the entire area. It has covered all my scotch bonnet seed. Just wanted to show you the longevity spinach from another angle, guys, to see, just to let you see how much it's grown. Right beside it, this is a volunteer. This is my Malabar spinach, and it has grown very well. It is already going to seed, so I'm gonna have more purple Malabar spinach um, seeds. This can be used as a spinach. It's kind of a little bit slippery. Um, they call it the okra of, of vegetables. So if you like okra, you'll like Malabar spinach. Um, here I have my jalapenos. They are still bearing fruit and I just haven't harvested them recently, but I still, I'm getting, oops, something got to that one. I'm still getting jalapenos. Still getting jalapenos. Oh, I forgot to show you guys. I haven't planted this yet, but it's doing very well. This is my Vicks plant. So you guys know Vicks Vapor Rub. This plant has similar smell and it has a lot of medicinal properties. Um, here's my Vicks Vapor Rub. All right, so let's go real quickly. I have a couple new additions that were planted in July or maybe August, earlier this month. This is another Aki tree, but this one is a little bit, it's probably like twice the size of the other one so this was also basically a stick it didn't have any leaves and I thought it was dead but I left it in a pot put it in a shady area and look at this guys it's the most beautiful healthy Aki so I just planted that a couple weeks ago and right beside it the new star the latest addition here is a star fruit tree I am so excited so I got this star fruit like three weeks ago. It had some blossoms on it and now the blossoms have become fruit. So I have multiple star fruit. You see them? I have multiple star fruit on the tree. Um, I got a little bit scared because I lost all the leaves on this branch, but the star fruits held. Yes, I did lose a few of the star fruit, but these look like they're here to stay. So I'm hoping to get some star fruit. 
this tree um i got it for like 45 dollars um and it came with already had star fruit then to wrap things up my pimento tree there's my pimento tree so i'm very pleased about my pimento or allspice tree um i just created this i just built this area for the chickens their own chicken run so that way they won't they'll stop tearing up my garden um, I'm gonna post a video soon to show you how I did that then over here guys um, I just have some sweet potato slips that I stuck back here and you see that little banana right there that is from the original banana that my mother-in-law gave me years ago she passed away two years ago so I was so happy that my husband bought that sucker in from her original tree so I'll have a piece of my mother-in-law here then finally um another star fruit tree this is one that i planted right around maybe february right before the freeze it wasn't doing well at all i see the leaves look like they're finally growing this tree i thought was a dud but no blossoms yet but it, the leaves are do look healthier now so i hope to get some star fruit um here i have my grapevine that is growing quite profusely and beside it this is another star so this is my mexican guava that i planted just about the same time as the freeze it was probably a foot tall but it had a guava on it and since then i've reaped two guavas and you can see this has two two guavas here this is still bearing fruit so i was very pleased that it had a second round of um a second round of blossoms but you can see it's a lot of, lots of new growth this tree is bearing it is doing absolutely beautiful it's a beautiful tree beautiful leaves guava leaves also have tons of medicinal um, properties when used as teas half of these plants that we have if you google google the properties they have so much medicinal value I didn't want to end the video without showing you what's going on up front. So here I have my bougainvillea that has been bearing pretty consistently. Before you know it, this is going to take over the whole fence and it's going to be really beautiful. My elderberry cuttings have basically been totally taken off with weeds. I need to come back in and clean those up and clean up, clean up these coconuts. I have two coconuts right there. Over here I have a, an atalfa mango, which I hear is a Filipino mango um it's 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 okay it's not my favorite mango but i do have a lot of space up front so and it was a gift so i i'm thankful for that then over here guys look at my strawberry tree otherwise known as jamaican cherry which is a cherry that we don't eat in jamaica but guys my strawberry tree that was three or four feet tall is now i would say 12 feet tall look at that it's now 12 feet tall let's see if we see the strawberries on on there i actually gave the kids in the neighborhood not all the kids a couple of the kids permission to come and eat whenever they want they can come have strawberries so let's see if we have any strawberries here i saw a bit of red let's see all right here's what it looks like this is what it looks like and it's super sweet it tastes like cotton candy it tastes like you're eating cotton candy and guys, what are these bugs called? Let me show you. We are these white bugs. I need to come and take care of these. Do you see that white bug right there? Wait, let me zone in on it. These white bugs have been wreaking havoc on these leaves. You see it? Yeah. So I'm not quite sure the name of them. But as I said, here in, in Central Florida, I am discovering new bugs every day. New bugs every day. But... It hasn't stopped the growth of a tree. A tree is massive, but it is. Those white bugs are damaging the leaves. I noticed some of the leaves are chewed up, but it's not damaging the plant, but it is damaging. It's not damaging the production of the tree, but it is damaging the leaves. So I'm gonna go take care of those. Um, and then my three frangipanis that I planted up front, those are flowering plants. So those three frangipanis, before you knew it, by next year, they're going to be huge and beautiful. Um, the white flies, I mean the same white bugs, attacked my lychee tree. And you can see it totally 
shredded the leaves. I hardly get out front, out, 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 um, come up front, out, outside in the front yard. So I did not realize this until like recently, like the past few days. And by that time, the leaves were completely shredded. So I'm hoping that I can find out exactly what those bugs are and treat them organically. But the good news is that there is tons of new growth. You see it right there? You see it right there? That's new growth. So there's lots of new growth coming out. So I'm hoping that my lychee tree, despite how bad it looks right now, I'm hoping that it will make a full comeback. I have no doubt it will. And then finally, along the front here, this is a side yard. I planted a couple of hibiscus, crotons, that will soon grow up and um, you know fill up this area between my home and the neighbor's home and these actually I think these are called periwinkle I'm not quite sure or vinca but these are volunteers so it's a big beautiful flower that came up as a volunteer right outside the bed so I left it there um, to add beauty to the front but that's it guys that's it for today hope you enjoyed this update I know it's a bit long but I wanted to show you guys just how much it was achieved in eight months and we can't end without saying hello to Mr. Pinky and the girls hey chick 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 hey chick 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 so there's Mr. Pinky and Miss Pearly and there's Mandy that's our little hideout they like the hideout under there. Mandy and Red's probably under in their little hideout. But that's it, guys. Um, go on out today. We're still in summer. Fall hasn't started yet. We still have some time to go out there and start some seeds. As you guys see, I just started a couple beds. I haven't even planted those seeds yet. But I'm going to be planting the seeds pretty soon. So, guys, it's not too late to go out there, plant some cuttings, buy some trees you know start some fruit trees start some seeds today guys but just get started before you know it you too will be reaping a harvest from your own backyard till next time bye now